Dr. Peter Grant Jordan. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me out there? Uh, I'm pleased to be with you this morning and uh, want to extend greetings uh, to County Executive Molinaro, honored guests, colleagues, and friends of Dutchess County Community College. I also want to pause to uh, make sure that I acknowledge uh, one of my ten bosses uh, who is here with us, uh, Greg Pulver, who is, uh, as you heard before, uh, chair of the legislature. Uh, thank you for your support and uh, guidance and counsel, along with other members of the board. I'm so pleased to welcome you to uh, the newest location for Dutchess Community College, DCC at HVR Airport. Just a few months ago, County Executive Molinaro and State Senator Serino pressed the big go button that launched what we feel is a new era of learning at DCC. As you look around here today, you can see we are definitely putting this space, this state-of-the-art facility, to great use. Our inaugural cohort of DCC aviation maintenance technician trainees are taking full advantage of this space from the welding and metal uh, and sheet metal shop to the diagnostic testing room. So too are students in our other aviation programs, our pilot program that we offer in partnership with US Aviation, and our aviation management program. More importantly, these programs and this facility represent or commitment to broadening aviation education in the region and providing a pipeline to high demand, high paying jobs in the aviation industry, both now and into the future. In addition to this outstanding building, we also created and celebrated the grand opening of another DCC facility this year, DCC at Fishkill, a 47,000 square foot facility that we believe expands our ability to serve residents of this county even more effectively. Crucial to both these projects and to many others has been the commitment from our friends and colleagues in county government. We could not have done this without your unwavering support for the shared vision and commitment to post-secondary learning, a vision that expands the role DCC can play in closing the skills gap in our region, a vision that provides top-notch training for in-demand and good-paying jobs, a vision that sees DCC as a key partner in fueling the county and region's economic development, and most importantly, a vision that reinforces and grows DCC's reputation as an important hub for learning. As the new guy on the block, I assure you, I take this vision and DCC's commitment to serving it seriously. In recent weeks, I've met with business and industry leaders, elected officials, and K-12 educators to explore how DCC might play a larger role in aligning the needs of employers with the aspirations of employees many of whom are and could be DCC students. We're developing university partnerships that will let DCC graduates complete baccalaureate degrees right here 
on our campuses, allowing us to increase access and to educational opportunities while addressing affordability. These and other partnerships are and will continue to be important to DCC's future. Our collective success lies in our ability to secure a leadership position for Dutchess County in New York's innovation economy. But we cannot do this without building a workforce that is well-trained to design, develop, and create new systems, products, and solutions. DCC plays and will continue to play a role in creating and developing that pipeline of talent. I believe, and I know you do too, that when it comes to higher education and public spending in general, you would be hard pressed to find a better investment than Dutchess Community College. We thank you for your continued support of DCC and our efforts to serve residents of Dutchess County and our region. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome New York State Senator Sue Serino. Good morning, everyone. And Dr. Jordan, thank you very much for your kind words, and you're an amazing new partner in our community that we really look forward to working with. You know, it's such an honor to be here with each and every one of you today. Never has a budget presentation been more important. The work to rebuild in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic really starts right here in our local community. We're having a strong foundation and making smart investments in key programs will really make all the difference as we work to ensure our community is able to truly bounce back. And you know, when you think about it, putting together a transformational budget that empowers our community to move forward without increasing the cost of living is really no small feat, but our county executive and his team have done it with this proposal. And I don't know about you, but everywhere I turn, prices are on the rise. But here, our county executive governs by listening, and he knows that our neighbors really need real relief. That's why not only is he proposing to make historic investments in everything from youth services and veterans programming to mental health support and senior care, all things that we all truly care deeply about. He is doing it while proposing the largest property tax cut the county has ever seen. You know, I always say our personal stories propel us forward and make us the people that we are today. Marcus has always been quite open about the challenges that his family had faced growing up, and that's what really makes him such a caring, thoughtful county executive that wants to see our families not only succeed, but thrive throughout our community. With that, it is my honor to introduce to you today our Duchess of County, County Executive, Mark Molinaro. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Sue. Good morning. Thanks for joining us uh, on uh, this uh, beautiful but windy uh, fall day. Uh, I'm uh, confident that the uh, next uh, moments uh, will uh, increase the temperature in the room. Uh, the last 20 months have been excruciatingly difficult for many. Uh, not, none, however, more than our most vulnerable. Those that live with mental wellness concerns and substance use disorder uh, were left in many ways uh, in utter uh, and anxious isolation. And while there are populations that we will talk about this morning and there are those that we must continue to reach out to, uh, for 20 months uh, as a society we left those who struggle the hardest to struggle alone. Uh, Dutchess County government continued day in and day out to provide service but it was obstructed uh, by obstacles uh, both imposed uh, and uh, encountered. 
And for 20 months, uh, those living with substance use and mental wellness issues uh, were left uh, in many ways to uh, fight for themselves. And there are two things as I begin this budget uh, presentation this morning you should know. Uh, as a community, we will never accept again. We will never tolerate again, uh, leaving our most vulnerable to live in isolation, period. Secondly, uh, we as a community and as a society have a moral obligation to assist those uh, who are struggling the most among us and find new ways uh, to open up new opportunities for their own success. In 2020, <clears throat> we have seen a 38% increase in overdose deaths in 2020 compared to 2019. In the first three quarters of this year, there have been 63 accidental overdose deaths countywide. Dutchess County will continue to focus our resources and our services on those who continue to struggle hard with substance use disorder. Uh, we will work to break down barriers and create new opportunities. One most important uh, is taking advantage of the settlement dollars through litigation, uh, brought about first by counties like ours against pharmaceutical companies that took advantage of our most vulnerable and concluded uh, by the steadfast efforts and hard work of Attorney General Tish James. Dutchess County, as part of that uh, shared lawsuit, uh, will see as much as $14 million in settlement assistance over the next 15 years. Uh, we will dedicate those resources and funds in this budget to expanding our outreach in every neighborhood and on every street across our community. We will continue to expand our 24-7 crisis services, a helpline, our stabilization center, our mobile intervention team, and we'll continue to broaden the partnerships we have with Mental Health America, Aster Services, and People USA. Helpline was successfully co-located in the Department of Emergency Response to better integrate our 911 dispatch with our helpline dispatch. This budget adds three additional full-time positions, improving staff consistency and expanding our capacity 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, the use of helpline and the integration at 911 allows us to divert calls appropriately uh, from uh, law enforcement response so that they in law enforcement can focus on the hard work they have. And we can direct the resources that are appropriate to those who struggle with mental illness and substance use disorder. And Dutchess County, thanks to this effort, is poised to be probably the first in, in the state of New York to successfully implement the 988 national uh, number for suicide prevention and behavioral health crises. We are well positioned to expand our reach to be available to everyone everywhere. Uh, thanks to resources uh, secured by Assemblymember Dee Dee Barrett, uh, Dutchess County next year will begin to launch our mobile community health clinic. Uh, this uh, mobile facility, an RV if you will, uh, will be dedicated principally to eastern and northern Dutchess counties uh, where we will uh, invest in outlying communities and provide full service access to physical and behavioral services and support. And we'll focus our resources and the work we do in infectious disease uh, and in immunizations uh, in and around those communities that don't have the same direct access uh, to the services physically located in central Dutchess. We'll manage intake screenings and referrals and create linkages to community partners. Uh, and we'll conduct community sessions, group sessions, and peer-to-peer -peer mediation uh, thanks to our ability with this resource to move into and around the community. We'll launch and uh, expand a new empowerment center in the city of Poughkeepsie to focus community-centered care and walk-in resource uh, where individuals uh, can receive assistance in a non-clinical setting. Uh, we'll staff the empowerment center with uh, individuals uh, uh, like recovery coaches and those who have, have lived with mental wellness and substance use issues themselves. The empowerment center will expand our connection to housing and support and job training 
We'll conduct group meetings and peer-to-peer -peer interactions. And we'll be available uh, for drop-in whenever someone is needed, whenever help is needed. Uh, at this location in the city, we'll train new recovery coaches and create new connections between those who have walked the journey uh, and continue to walk the journey in recovery to be a mentor and of assistance uh, to others. Here at the Empowerment Center, we'll launch cutting-edge neurological uh, therapies, including biofeedback training, teaching coping skills for stress and anxiety, uh, bridge device therapy, uh, transitioning individuals uh, onto medication, medicated assisted treatment programs, increasing the success rates and creating the path towards long-term recovery. As part of our Think Differently initiative, uh, we are expanding our reach to provide therapy and support to those families with individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities confronting substance abuse and use themselves. And thanks to a successful partnership we've had uh, with towns and villages and local law enforcement, uh, the Dutchess County Drug Task Force will be permanently funded as part of our commitment to, to ending and confronting drug trafficking. This partnership provides direct county aid to town and village law enforcement across Dutchess Crown County, integrates that response with the professionals and their agencies with the professionals at the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office, second to none. Along with those in prosecution and the D uh, Dutchess County District Attorney's Office, uh, and has been successful in upending and uh, preventing drug trafficking in and around our community. Now, this budget also doubles down on our commitment to those who lived in violence and violent conditions in their homes these last 20 months, expanding resources to assist in prevention, intervention, and awareness of domestic violence, expanding our advocacy services, enhancing our support, and committing ourselves to standing shoulder to shoulder, side by side, with victims. This 2022 budget will bring our commitment to responding to domestic violence and sexual assault to $3.9 million. And we will continue to expand uh, that partner those partnerships we have with not-for-profit organizations like Grace Smith House, House of Hope, and Family Services. And we thank you for your commitment and work uh, these last 20 months. And on behalf of the county, uh, the last 10 years I've been serving as county executive. We have, as I said, a moral obligation to stand with and by those who struggle the hardest. And we will compel county government to be everywhere it needs to be, and to be a resource and to support uh, those uh, living with addiction issues and mental wellness concerns and those living in violent situations. It is our responsibility, and let me say again, we will never, never repeat the mistakes that we made uh, as a society these last 20 months and leave those who struggle the hardest in isolation. We can commit to broadening our reach in this area uh, of uh, responsibility because for the last decade, we have made very careful choices. The county legislature, led by Greg Pulver, uh, chair of the Budget Committee, Will Truitt, uh, and members of the legislature, Republican and Democrat, whether on good days or bad days, they wish to admit it, uh, working together to commit this county government to being a steady and competent example of the role and responsibility of local government. No county went into the pandemic stronger financially than we, and our fiscal position today in 2021 is unmatched. We have made careful and deliberate decisions to strengthen the underpinnings and the infrastructure of this community, and we will continue to do so. Managing our debt and our commitment to using and leveraging debt to, to, to bring about important projects, Duchess is well within our constitutional debt limit, uh, borrowing only 8.8% of our authorized borrowing capacity, and our debt service has been stabilized over the last 10 years. In fact, in this county, we spend 50% less than the state uh, per capita uh, that, than, than is spent per capita across the state for debt service. That's important to note. 
I would tell you that nothing we've ever borrowed to invest in has ever been done without bipartisan support. And those dollars that we've been able to leverage to invest in important projects like the Stabilization Center, and thanks to Senator Serino and Assemblymember Barrett, we were given an initial infusion of dollars to move that forward. It may be roads, highways, and bridges where we are on a constant effort to keep our infrastructure at the highest capacity. And thank you, Bob Balkine and the Department of Public Works. The expansion in county parks and the reliance on those these last 20 months has never been more important. We leverage our borrowing capacity to make those investments. And because this county has the highest bond rating of any county in the state, we do it at the lowest interest rates possible. This county for the last decade has lived within its means. And yes, that is a lesson I wish other levels of government would learn. We cannot spend money we don't have and we cannot impose taxation uh, and, and increase costs on people who can't afford it. And so for the last decade, we have been able to maintain a 1.3% annual growth in spending. The 2022 budget continues that responsible commitment to Dutchess County taxpayers. Our spending per capita is 28% below the, st the state average, and our tax levy per capita is 27% below the state average. This budget provides historic tax relief because we can. $20 million in annualized tax relief for Dutchess County residents will be delivered with the adoption of the budget I present to you today. This We provide, with this proposal, the eighth consecutive property tax cut and the largest property tax reduction in the history of Dutchess County. At $5.5 million, every taxpayer will benefit from this historic relief. Now, combined with economic growth, and we are roaring back on what will be a very, very fragile economic footing, nationwide and in the state of New York and throughout the Hudson Valley, but we are roaring back. And because of that economic growth and because of our responsible spending and the reduction of our tax levy, this budget provides a 10% cut in the Dutchess County tax rate for Dutchess County taxpayers. Additionally, thanks to the commitment of uh, Chairman Pulver, uh, we are moving forward uh, with, uh, uh, with their approval, uh, the hopeful legislative approval, uh, with a new exemption on sales tax. Our sales tax exemption uh, to be provided for clothing and footwear purchases up to $110. That's what the state allows, that's what we will adopt, and that's what we will provide Dutchess County taxpayers. That sales tax exemption alone will provide middle class and hardworking families $14.2 million in annualized tax relief. And again, combined with the $5.5 million in tax levy reductions, $20 million in sustainable tax relief for taxpayers who deserve it. We are doing this because we don't need the money and we will give it back to the taxpayers who pay our bills. Now let me offer, there is no magic, there is no sleight of hand, and this is not a political statement. When we do not need taxpayer money, we shouldn't take it. And when we can give it back, we ought to. We can and we will. And the we reason we are able to do this is because for the last decade, we have made very important, sometimes difficult, but always careful decisions. And at the same time, we have leveraged the expense of money and your dollars to create new economic growth, new revenue opportunities, and expansion of the county's financial base. And by doing that, by doing that, we have established for ourselves the ability not only to, to have weathered the last 20 months, but to continue to provide sustainable relief and competent government and, and a smaller, smarter, and more effective county government to Dutchess County taxpayers in the years ahead. This budget maintains that strong fiscal position, and it maintains our commitment to being responsible with Dutchess County taxpayers' dollars. The budget provides no increase in services, excuse me, no reduction in services, no increase in fees, and we will not use one dime of the county's fund balance, maintaining our rainy day savings that provides us the flexibility 
uh, to address those unknowns that we will confront in the days and years ahead. Let me say this again to my skeptical friends. This budget maintains a 1.3% annualized spending growth averaged over the last decade. We spend less in this proposed budget than we will spend in 2021. We will not reduce county services. We will provide nearly $20 million of, of tax relief, and we will not, do not appropriate any dollar of fund balance in order to balance this budget. Now, with these dollars in the 2022 budget, we are excited to make really important investments all across Dutchess County, but let's start in our park system. Last year, uh, with the support of the county legislature and in partnership with municipalities and partners across the county, we invested in the largest expansion in Dutchess County Parks in 50 years. This year, uh, next year, we will begin the development of the Lake Walton Connection Trail. This will connect uh, through Lake Walton Preserve, our new universally accessible park under development in the town of East Fishkill, a, uh, a passive rail trail through and around Lake Walton to and back to, back from and back to uh, the Dutchess Rail Trail. We'll, as you know, we completed the expansion of the Harlem Valley Rail Trail, connecting finally the Dutchess uh, Harlem Valley Trail to the Columbia County Rail Trail. And you likely uh, have already seen, some of you have already been out there uh, biking or walking on the Maybrook, Maybrook Trail. This is the connection between Hopewell and Pauling as part of the Empire State Trail. Dutchess County is proud to be responsible for maintaining that segment of, of, of this, this state trail. Now in 2022, thanks to our investments, we'll move forward with uh, the development of a splash pad at Wilcox Park in the town of Milan and New Pavilion at Bowdoin Park for educational programs. And yes, we will invest at Dutchess Stadium, one of our great Dutchess County parks, the development of a new clubhouse, new seating capacity, and a new catering space uh, to generate new revenue. We will move forward in 2022 with the completion of the Quiet Cove entrance and access. You see it underway as part of development, uh, the redevelopment of the former Hudson River Psych Center. Uh, and in 2022, in order to accomplish all this and uh, more at park expansion, uh, the budget includes additional staff and resources in the parks division uh, to expand within the Department of Public Works, bringing our total commitment to Dutchess County Parks to $16.3 million. We launched several years ago a comprehensive effort to focus our support and resource and, and, and assistance to young people. Uh, we have an obligation to create uh, paths to success. Well, we created the path to promise as a commitment uh, to better understand how uh, young people develop, the, the support that they need to achieve certain development stages and what resources, programs, and services are necessary uh, to ensure that every child has the opportunity to succeed. Creating equ equity of access and then along their path to promise, create the connections necessary to help them develop. You know, we know kids have struggled the hardest over the last 20 months as well, uh, wondering whether or not they'd return to a classroom. And by the way, wondering whether or not a, a, a classroom developed during the Industrial Revolution in buildings uh, uh, scattered across uh, the landscape are in fact the best and most appropriate ways to teach our kids. We ought to revisit uh, vocational training and make greater connections uh, with BOCES and hands-on education. We have to create new ways to open opportunities to kids. Uh, to succeed from birth to employment. Now, well, we'll commit, continue that commitment and expand our reach to support Dutchess County's young people. Uh, $150,000 commitment to day one to build a high quality and expand access to affordable daycare, gr creating greater capacity countywide. Uh, we expand our youth advocate program, uh, which provides intensive care management for at-risk youth between the ages of 12 and 18 years of age. We're further streamlining our foster care system to make it easier for families and support children in the system. And we know how important it is uh, to make uh, those connections easier and to build sustainable families for foster, uh, foster parents. We're partnering uh, with the city of Poughkeepsie uh, on a City Connects pilot project. This to integrate resources in middle school in the city of Poughkeepsie uh, to ensure that every incoming middle school student has a plan for success. And in 2022, City Connects will expand to the Hyde Park School District and provide the same resource and support to middle school students there, hoping that as we prove the success of assisting kids in middle school, let me tell you, I have one in middle school. 
I don't like uh, middle school. <laughs> I like the people there. I like the students there. S middle school is a very challenging time for young people. It's also an important developmental stage. Uh, and that for us uh, is a key age uh, bracket, a development stage, if you will, where if we can provide the resource and support to young people there, we can help them uh, to uh, achieve success. We are expanding our commitment to our kids because we have an obligation to do it. And the work that we do to provide support and assistance, whether in school or out of school, whether, whether preschool or post K-12 in facilities like this one, every opportunity must be given to every child to be successful. Ensuring that they have every chance, every chance to achieve the success that they define for themselves. In order to ensure that we can do this in an effective way, in order to centralize that delivery and to export great ideas uh, to other parts of the county and other parts of the country, uh, we are moving forward with a state-of-the-art youth center in the city of Poughkeepsie. Our Youth Opportunity Union will act as the hub for the path to promise. It will be an incubator of ideas and experiences that we think will help improve the quality of life of every young person. It will be an open door to those who struggle the hardest to ensure that we have the support necessary. It'll be our opportunity to observe, to support, and to encourage young people and their families. And we'll do it in the heart of the city of Poughkeepsie because, because the, su the success of Poughkeepsie is the success of Dutchess County. But at the same time, we can make connections between kids in our urban centers with kids in our suburban and rural communities. And by leveraging those resources, the mobile team, the mobile unit we talked about in our park space and other parts of the county, we can create connections that kids need and experiences that they deserve. And the Youth Opportunity Union will be that place to innovate and incubate great ideas. I'd encourage you on your way out to not trip over the you, uh, but to, to stop by the presentation on your way out uh, this afternoon or this morning. Uh, and you'll see both the development ideas, but also you'll be given an opportunity to add your input. And this is a community-based effort that we want to build from the bottom up, and we want to ensure every great idea is considered. This county in 2014 made very clear that those living with intellectual and developmental disabilities have been too often forgotten. And I will say with no apology, in the last 20 months by other layers of government, in fact, those with intellectual and developmental di disabilities were the target. They were the target of bad decisions and bad policy, and they were the, they were the, the, the target of uh, individuals ignoring those uh, with disabilities. We saw it, Dana Smith knows this in the Department of Emergency Response, actually being told by the state of New York not to deliver PPE to individuals uh, caring for those with intellectual disabilities. Being told that we couldn't make opportunities available to test and to monitor those locations. Imagine those families who uh, re rely on early intervention services and support not having any ability to do that. Yes, senior citizens struggled and there were poor choices made there. In many situations, our parents and grandparents have their kids and their grandkids available to them. And it's not the same story for many of those living with intellectual disabilities. As they age, their families age, and support structures begin uh, to diminish. Our Think Differently initiative isn't a slogan. It isn't a, a simple uh, phrase. It is a call to action to recognize the inherent capacity of every individual to achieve success for themselves and the need as a society to break down barriers and create opportunities. To ensure that any obstacle that would stand in the way of an individual who is differently abled is removed so that they too can achieve for themselves greater opportunity and success. You'll notice today and today in this presentation, uh, I'm not going to say, and for Think Differently, we're doing this. Because over the last seven years, we've integrated it, Think Differently into everything we do. And so, yes, whether it is the Department of Finance creating opportunities for an employee that's differently abled or the county clerk's office creating in the archival uh, system a, a position for those, uh, an individual who, who might not have a job otherwise, or it could be in the Department of Public Works where we're changing the way we do park structures and access to playgrounds. It might be in veterans with Adam and the team reaching out to those with intellectual de developmental disabilities within the family of veterans to provide access. It is our Department of Community Family Services. It is our Behavioral uh, and Community Health Department. It's all that we do in every aspect we do it, trying to create opportunities and break down barriers. 
So if we annoy you with by, by continuing to encourage people to think differently, we're going to continue to do it. We are going to agitate, irritate, and advocate any way we can to ensure that there are greater successes, greater opportunity, and greater advancement of the services and support necessary for those with disabilities and their families because we have an obligation to do it. It is the last acceptable prejudice in this country. It is the prejudice of low expectations and our assumption that certain people can't achieve certain things because we believe they can't. My daughter isn't, isn't embarrassed to be on the autism spectrum. She celebrates it as who she is. And her father needed some time to understand that. We're going to do more of it. And uh, this young man reminded me of it uh, just the other day in the village of Fishkill as we uh, read a book about Temple Grandin. Uh, and uh, he walked up and said, I'm a lot like her. And that's all I needed to hear to remind us that every day and every way uh, we have to create uh, new paths to success, new paths to opportunity, and we have to break down barriers. So yes, we're going to continue to advocate for them. And we're going to continue to say to our partners, by the way, whether it's in the DOT or in the town or in a village government, if there's a crosswalk that doesn't work, if there's an access to park that isn't quite right, got to focus on it. Got to create those opportunities and break down those barriers. And we'll continue to provide support to make that happen. And speaking of our investment, to, in, investment in streets and sidewalks, we continue that as well. It seems the one thing that everybody agrees on, but nobody, no, nobody else seems to be able to do except our layers of government. They all agree on investing in infrastructure, but they can't quite ever get around to doing it. Uh, well, not at the town and village and county level. Uh, we continue to do it. Uh, this budget commits $24 million in road, highway, and bridge repair and maintenance uh, to continue to maintain and enhance Dutchess County's highways, roads, and bridges. Additionally, uh, we have spent a great deal of time supporting, and rightfully so, uh, law enforcement agencies. We've got a few initiatives there, too, I want to talk about in a moment. Uh, but this budget launches a $1 million grant opportunity for fire departments and rescue squads all across Dutchess County, a competitive grant to create for them access to new tools, new resources, and new assistance to help build their capacity and address uh, the needs they have, both in career and volunteer fire departments across the county. And yes, Dutchess County remains committed to public safety. Our commitment to providing a safe and secure community uh, is uh, one of our most fundamental roles in government. And uh, while there needs to be address of a policy that has made it more difficult, I will say this today and always. Uh, this county and this community continues its support of our law enforcement agencies to provide them the tools, the resources, and the training they need to meet modern needs, to confront modern expectations, and to project leadership uh, into the future while also providing the very basic responsibility of public safety. And let me use this moment uh, to say what I know um, we all uh, recognize uh, and feel. Uh, for 10 years, in that chair right there, uh, Adrian Butch Anderson didn't miss any of these presentations. Didn't miss the state of the county and didn't miss a budget presentation. And I know he wanted to be someplace else. Uh, uh, well, today he is. Uh, and after uh, so many years of serving this community, both as a member of the Sheriff's Office and as the leader of the Sheriff's Office, uh, we bid him uh, farewell. Uh, he left a gaping hole in our law enforcement and public safety community. Uh, he was uh, larger than life. And on behalf of the residents of Dutchess County, we not only had and will continue to extend our thoughts and prayers to his family, but we will continue to, to extend our thoughts, prayers, and support to the men and women of the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office who are, in fact, second to none. At the same time, <laughs> at the same time, let me tell you uh, that for the time being, there is no one more appropriate, nor, nor respected, nor, nor capable of continuing to lead the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office than the man who is seated in that chair today, and that's our acting sheriff, Kirk Imperati. And so with that in mind, the 2022 budget continues our commitment, in fact, a, a, an increase in commitment to uh, law enforcement and public safety. 
uh, including advancement of new, of new tools, training and resources for police officers. Uh, the budget includes two new deputies, uh, deputies to patrol. Uh, it provides adequate resources to fully staff the Dutchess County Jail and uh, totaling our commitment to the Dutchess County Sheriff's Office at $58 million, which represents a 5% increase over last year. We are thankful to the men and women in law enforcement, and we are grateful for their service uh, and their sacrifice on our behalf. Thank you, Kirk. Our capital plan uh, commits us to a $30 million enhancement to emergency response communications throughout the county. This is uh, to upgrade uh, the communication system for re uh, rescue, fire, and law enforcement. For those of you in Eastern and Northern Dutchess, you know the challenges. Uh, Brad reminds me every day uh, as he comes across the, no, uh, his friends do, uh, as, as they come across uh, uh, the Eastern part of the county. There is little question that uh, we uh, need to make that improvement for redundancy and interconnectivity. Uh, and that effort led by Dana Smith and the Department of Emergency Response is underway. Uh, we are launching a, a Think Differently Emergency Preparedness Plan, building emergency, a, an emergency disaster response model for those uh, intellectual and developmentally, uh, those with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their community. Uh, one population that uh, has uh, really uh, been uh, challenged, uh, well, these last several months most notably, uh, but remain uh, a focus for county government are and remain our veterans. Uh, we know that uh, the uh, uh, the, the exit from Afghanistan has stirred up, stirred up emotion, and I'll leave uh, any editorial comment aside other than to say uh, that those men and women who served and continue to serve have done nothing wrong and deserve our respect and support regardless of decisions made by elected or appointed officials elsewhere. Uh, they are, by definition, heroes and continue in many ways uh, to provide for our safety and our security across the globe. But here. But here at home, we must continue to do more. Uh, the traditional access points and the support net networks for veterans just are not sufficient, and they're not the way in which veterans interact any longer. And so this budget, uh, and uh, so uh, we are going to focus uh, additional resources on transportation, housing, and peer uh, uh, counseling. Uh, but we are first this month launching uh, with counties across the state Operation Greenlight. This is an effort to pay tribute to our uh, men and women who have returned home from Iraq and Afghanistan while raising awareness to county-level veterans' uh, resources. We encourage uh, county governments, businesses, and all of you uh, to light up your home or business or uh, uh, building green to recognize the sacrifice of uh, America's heroes. And we'll encourage that uh, across Dutchess County and across the state of New York. This budget includes additional funding to Vet Zero. In fact, uh, uh, we are going to uh, provide them the ability to, to uh, double their capacity. Vet Zero is a ride partnership program sponsored by Hudson River Housing that provides free transportation uh, to VA appointments, other medical appointments, and other resources uh, that veterans need. Uh, last year, uh, they provided 1,000 free rides to area veterans. This budget doubles that capacity, giving them an additional driver, additional vehicle, and the ability to move veterans around Dutchess County in a non-traditional transportation way. And thank you, uh, Adam, and uh, the folks, of course, at Hudson River Housing for continuing to advance Vet Zero. Uh, additionally, Additionally, uh, we are uh, bringing our, uh, an additional $225,000 partnership uh, to Mental Health America to advance our HERO initiative. Uh, this focus on housing, employment, reintegration, and outreach has enabled us to connect veterans returning home with the support that they need to re-enter the workforce, to find their way in connection to appropriate and affordable housing, and to provide transitional services uh, for those who might be homeless or on, uh, at risk of becoming homeless. Uh, that $225,000 will enable us to expand the reach uh, and the effort and the work uh, that, they, that they have done. Uh, this budget continues our commitment to the vet to vet peer counseling program. We're thankful to Senator Sue Serino for remaining uh, an advocate, Assemblymember Dede Barrett remaining an advocate despite every year uh, the executive branch seems to want to defund, of the state of New York, seems to want to defund this program 
Uh, they have been champions to ensure that we get those dollars back in the budget. But by integrating our vet-to-vet -vet peer mediation program with these other services, we create greater connectivity and we continue our commitment to those, uh, those services and thank our friends at uh, MHA, Andrew and, and uh, uh, your staff, we're very, very grateful uh, uh, to, to all of you uh, for your work. Uh, and taking advantage of the fact that we have a highway dedicated to veterans, in 2022, Dutchess County will build a veterans memorial to honor uh, the men and women who served and sacrificed in Afghanistan and Iraq, recognizing our uh, heroes in the war on terror uh, along the Veterans Highway in the town of Hyde Park. So we're grateful to move forward uh, with that initiative as well. I know that you know this, and of course I've mentioned it uh, a few times already. Uh, seniors uh, uh, not only uh, have had they struggled uh, before 2020, but during the pandemic, uh, without question, uh, were left uh, to struggle even harder. Uh, so we advance our commitment uh, to support uh, Dutchess County seniors. Isolation, inability to access certain resources, and long-term care remain the greatest obstacles for seniors and their families, uh, especially at a time where getting uh, access to new workers and new employees to provide those resources even greater challenge. Uh, Dutchess County will expand our adult daycare uh, funding by 80%, 80% increase in adult daycare funding. Uh, we'll add $100,000 to expand the capacity and the ability to provide home care throughout Dutchess County. And we'll launch a prescription disposal kit program for at-home or homebound seniors so that they can, in their homes, dispose of safely unneeded, unwanted, and expired prescription drugs, allowing us to take those out of uh, both homes and potentially end up in the hands of those living with or, or dealing with substance use disorder. Uh, we, launched, uh, we launched several years ago a new partnership with uh, not-for-profits across Dutchess County called our Agency Partner uh, Grant, uh, the APG. Uh, this budget, 2022, includes $4 million in partnership uh, in our competitive grant program uh, for agency partners across Dutchess County and continues our ability to uh, support their work. And I do want to note this. Uh, during uh, the onset of the pandemic, there was a question and other counties made different choices than we did as to whether or not we would maintain our support for not-for-profits, whether they could or could not provide certain contracted services during the pandemic. Our message was, if you could, we would. And so we continued to uh, provide what assistance we could to not-for-profits so that they weren't hollowed out, knowing that when we got our way through the pandemic, we would need them as partners. And our agency partner grant program and the contracts and partnerships we have with agencies across Dutchess County are so very, very valuable. Uh, this year, we launched our Learn, Play, Create grant to support uh, organizations that provide athletic, uh, recreational, educational opportunities to young people. Tremendously successful, and we've been able to touch and support hundreds and, uh, of organizations and thousands of young people's lives all across Dutchess County. We're going to continue that successful initiative with a $500,000 commitment in 2022. And Dutchess County uh, was among the first in the state of New York decades ago. Uh, to commit resources to the preservation of open space and active farmland. Uh, in the previous administration, and led by Chairman uh, Brad Kendall in the county legislature, we committed Dutchess County to partnering with farmers and, uh, and, and preservationists to conserve active farmland. Uh, since uh, the onset, we've dedicated uh, resources that have enabled us to uh, preserve some 5,000 acres of active farmland and open space all across Dutchess County. Uh, we are, in 2022, expanding our reach uh, we will dedicate a, an additional $1.5 million in open space and farmland protection, which will allow us to protect a total 6,335 acres of active farmland and open space across Dutchess County. In fact, just this year alone, uh, we were able to protect 490 acres, and that's thanks to the commitment of the county legislature and in partnership with so many providers. And to the only farmer left in the county legislature, Greg Culver, thank you. Uh, creating new outlets and supporting creativity and innovation among uh, uh, all of our residents remains critically important. Our partnership with uh, Arts Mid-Hudson has been able to expand uh, not only creativity, but the reach and economic impact 
uh, of arts and arts development and arts activities across our community. This budget includes a 34% increase in the county's um, uh, financial support of arts in Hudson that allows us to expand access and programming uh, to those with intellectual and developmental disabilities, uh, expand the capital and capacity of arts organizations across Dutchess County, and enhances our arts and education initiative we launched last year, so tremendously successful, where we, we, we're bringing arts education uh, not only to school, but non-traditional educational settings to encourage young people to be creative and to uh, explore arts not only uh, as an outlet, but as an occupation. We recognize that today the struggle and challenge for businesses and families uh, is ever growing. Uh, and of course, coming out of the last 20 months, creating a new and more dynamic economy is just so critically important. There are those who point to individual projects and say, I don't like that one, but I like this one. I like this one, but I don't like that one. We need all of them. Uh, the diversification of Dutchess County's economy and workforce is the thing that helps us to weather particular storms. We're not. We're not victims to the whim of a single employer, but rather the ability uh, by diversifying our economy and our workforce, we're able to weather storms and, and to ensure that there are different opportunities for everyone, advancement from entry level uh, to high paying jobs. Uh, well, our commitment through Think Duchess and the Think Duchess Alliance continues to expand. Uh, we're dedicating $2.3 million in additional funding for workforce development programs to attract new workers and to uh, support businesses all across Dutchess County and we are tremendously, tremendously uh, uh, thrilled with the success of uh, this development and I'll mention that in just one moment. But when you leave here today you'll see an airport that was really underutilized for decades and was a financial burden to Dutchess County taxpayers that no longer is. Uh, we no longer pay for the operations of this airport, uh, that's self-funded and creates its own revenue to support its own, its own operation. And because of that, we've been able to, at the same time, attract new investment. Not only this one, uh, but we'll be dedicating $350,000 uh, to site development right here at the Hudson Valley Regional Airport, uh, where we'll, get, uh, we'll identify development uh, uh, pads here in this area around the airport to help expand the campus, to bring new economic investment, new private investment to the airport, and with it, new jobs. And we know that in the aviation world, new jobs are high-paying jobs. Uh, which is why we are and we're thrilled to partner with Dutchess Community College and SUNY uh, to advance this aviation program. This is a state-of-the-art uh, facility that provides not only traditional educational opportunity in the area of aviation, but also an experiential uh, education where young people can learn, hand well, any people can learn hands-on, some young, some not as young. Uh, but it is uh, fundamentally a pipeline to higher paying jobs right here at Dutchess Community College. And let me say uh, to Dr. Jordan, uh, this probably was your first um, uh, sort of you know, formal presentation to the public since coming here. Uh, on behalf of the residents of Dutchess County, on behalf of Dutchess County government, would you all join me in welcoming officially Dr. Jordan as president? I can tell you your calm demeanor and deliberate nature has already provided uh, great, uh, great leadership and, and uh, an opportunity here on campus and uh, uh, we look forward to future partnerships. But I do want you to know uh, that when Dr. Jordan uh, met uh, with me early on, um, he didn't ask me what we could do for him. It was what, is, what can Dutchess Community College do more for the community with a focus on, on workforce development with a focus on creating access to underserved populations and understanding the resource that is DCC. This is, without question, Dutchess County's finest asset. And we are proud to commit $21 million in, in support to this institution and the people who rely on it. I do want to take this moment to thank not only Dr. Jordan, but the leadership team, team here at DCC, your staff, the faculty, and all those uh, who work so hard in some very challenging uh, times to continue to provide excellence of education. Thank you for that. Uh, we're grateful for, for that. And uh, uh, this institution will have never been more important than it is these next several years uh, in developing and redeveloping Dutchess County's economy and, uh, and workforce. So again, thank you for that.
And so our work to broaden the economic activity, and we've seen it, we see it in every corner of Dutchess. We see opportunity, uh, uh, growth, uh, new development, new job creation in every corner of Dutchess. Uh, that is done in partnership with supervisors and mayors uh, who take leadership roles to create new opportunities and to remove barriers. And I'm grateful to our partnerships uh, with uh, the supervisors and mayors. I know Aileen is here, the president, Aileen Moore, the president of the Supervisors and Mayors Association. Uh, Nick Dellis, I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, I should stop there. Uh, there are a number of supervisors and mayors here, uh, Dick Thurston, Nick Del Sandro, Rob Rollison, and all of the others uh, who, who are here. I'm very grateful, very, very grateful for the partnership uh, that we have and the opportunities you create. I want to thank our friends at uh, the Dutchess County Regional Chamber of Commerce, not only for the great work that you do to support existing businesses and help us attract new ones, uh, but you are on the front lines of providing resource and assistance uh, to businesses these last 20 months. So thank you, Frank, and your team. Uh, they all deserve a nice round of applause. And I want to use these last moments to extend uh, uh, two more thanks. Uh, first, uh, to the employees of Dutchess County. Uh, what, these last 20 months have helped to define, in many ways, redefine the importance of county government. Uh, we are, in many ways, the level of government that people don't necessarily pay much attention to until something breaks. We're like the, the water pipes. But when it comes to responding to a public health crisis, when it comes to connecting the most vulnerable with the service and the support they need, there is no other level of government that does it in the state of New York. So let me say that again. There is no other level of government that does that in the state of New York. Villages and cities and towns don't do it, and the state doesn't do it. That's the mandate that we keep talking about. It is our mandate to provide those connections and that resource and that support. And Dutchess County employees rose to the challenge of the last 20 months. They defined themselves with competence and compassion. Some were asked to do things they had never done before and to work in places they had never visited before. Others had to double down and do the thing they had trained and worked for but never had to exercise. Some were asked to come to work every day, all day, and some were asked to sacrifice by staying home. All of them, all of them, did what we needed to do in order to weather the last 20 months. And they did it with great success. They did it with professionalism. And most notably, they did it with great compassion. You deserve our appreciation, and you have it. Thank you. And for 10 years, I have stand, stood behind a podium, uh, mostly longer than you want me to, uh, and said thank you to the residents of Dutchess County. Uh, when politicians say that, it is easy to think that we don't mean it. It's sort of a nice way to end a speech, and thank you. Uh, but what I will tell you is, um, with every fiber of my being, and with the most uh, authenticity and uh, genuineness I can muster, my wife would like me to muster but a bit more. Uh, I want to extend our gratitude and thanks to the residents of Dutchess County. Uh, for the last uh, year and a half, and for me, for the last decade, uh, you have worked with us. You have helped lead us. And when necessary, you have allowed us to lead you. There is something fundamentally important about what we as a community have been able to achieve. It isn't the buildings that we build or the bridges that we repair. It's not necessarily the parks or the services we offer. Uh, it is our ability as a community to remain a community. Yes, there were moments over the last two years where some people said some awful things. Others felt some awful things. Many lost, felt uh, excruciating loss, loss, some fear, many anxiety or stress. Some lashed out in anger, others in fear, some in upset, others in hope. All of how we reacted as a community is entirely appropriate and acceptable. And you can't tell people how they're supposed to react to situations outside of their control. We'd like people to act more civilly toward one another. We'd like us to love each other a little bit more. But to expect it in those moments of trauma and grief and tragedy, to expect it 
might be something that we ought to simply expect of ourselves alone. And so for two years, Americans and residents across the globe had to really dig deep. And some rattled apart, not Dutchess County. And we had those moments, I've seen the school board meetings, <laughs> We had those moments where we felt the protests, both for and against something, and all of that in one way or another, minus any violence or, or, da or damage, all of that is appropriate and acceptable. We've been able to weather it because we have been able to remain steadfast in our commitment to each other. I think that there are people across America who don't know it, uh, but envy that, and envy that we have it here. And so in the days and weeks and months ahead, uh, this isn't a call to remember the good old days of getting along. This is just a reminder that we did. And, when we, and, there, and because we did work our way through it, we can always. And that, to me, is where government ends and community begins. The ability among neighbors to figure out ways to weather storms together, to celebrate successes together, uh, and to achieve success together. The 2022 budget continues our commitment to responsibly managing your tax dollars. It continues our commitment to providing enhanced and improved services to everyone who calls Dutchess County home, most notably those who struggle the hardest. And at the end of the day, yes, because we have been responsible, we can provide relief. And so this budget maintains that responsibility, provides enhanced services, and, and gives Dutchess County taxpayers much needed tax relief when they need it the most. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of uh, Dutchess County government, to all of you, thanks for spending some time with us this morning. I present to you the 2022 budget for your consideration and for the legislature's adoption. Thank you very much.